Arab army continues to crush the terrorists and discovers a third tunnel between Al Qaboon and Jobar. The U.S. Congress legitimizes supporting terrorists in Syria, spending $27 million for training them. And the Muslim Brotherhood escalate their terrorism in Egypt, attacking the security forces in Cairo, killing seven people and injuring more than 260. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. In Hama, two citizens were killed today as a roadside bomb planted by the terrorists exploded on the road of Tel Dawla Armele in the Salamiya area. An official source said that the bomb blew off as a motorcycle carrying a man and a woman passed on the road, immediately killing both of them. Meanwhile, a military unit killed the leader of the so-called the Brigade of the Free People of the Levant in a qualitative operation against a terrorist hideout in Al-Ghab in Hama countryside. This leader, named Muhyiddin Shahir Ayan, was also wanted for committing many crimes of murder, rape, theft and sabotage. A citizen was wanted when terrorists fired a mortar shell on the housing area in Berzi. The shell caused large material damage in the houses near a primary school and the cars in the area. Also in Damascus countryside, Syrian armed forces continue their qualitative operations in Al-Qaboon. They found a third tunnel linking this area to Jobar, passing underneath the highway. The tunnel was nearly 400 meters long. A military source said that the terrorists exploited some tunnels that were previously dug by the Ministry of Electricity and joined them together through other tunnels which they themselves dug and used for their criminal acts of terrorism. The newly discovered tunnel was lit by electricity. It contained Molotov bombs attached to bottles full of fuel. The terrorists threw them on passing people along the international highway. Iran renewed its attitude of calling for a political solution to the crisis in Syria through national dialogue. Iran stressed the necessity that this solution should be comprehensive and joined by all the effective parties on the Syrian arena. The spokesperson of the Iranian Foreign Ministry held a press conference in which he said that the dialogue should be joined by both the Syrian government and the opposition, but not with the extremists. He pointed out that there were many serious differences among the parties that would join the international conference on Syria expected to be held in Geneva. The spokesman said that if Iran joined this conference, its role would be constructive, active and positive. American involvement in the Syrian crisis is no longer hidden or unclear. It has become fully exposed. Officials in the American Congress told Reuters news agency that nearly $27 million were spent on an American program to train the so-called fighters of the Syrian opposition in Turkey. More than 800 of these fighters received training that showed the direct involvement of Washington in directly supporting terrorists who shed Syrian blood. Some representatives in the U.S. Congress asserted that the, an American legislator and the team working with him have recently asked for more information before approving the allocation of $1.3 billion for this program, which began in Turkey a few months ago. Moving to Egypt, where the chairman of the Central Administration of Critical and Urgent Conditions in the Egyptian Ministry of Health announced the death of seven people and the wounding of 261 others in clashes in Ramses Square and the October 
Bridge near the University of Cairo last night between supporters of the dismissed President Mohamed Morsi and the police forces. The demonstrators cut off the bridge. More than 130 wounded people left hospitals, while a nearly similar number remained to receive treatment. The clashes also led to the death of one demonstrator and the wounding of four others in the area of Rabi al adawiyah there, where more than 100 people wounded near the university, where five others died. A security source had announced earlier that two officers and two policemen were wounded during the clashes in Ramses Square last night after the demonstrators closed the October Bridge. The Muslim Brotherhood began yesterday to carry out their plot of cutting off traffic movement in the main streets, attacking citizens and creating chaos. Iraqi army foiled an attempt by a terrorist group from Al Nusra Front to infiltrate from Syria into Iraq and to also clash with two terrorist groups in Al Anbar area, killing 23 of them. Iraqi security sources said that a force from Al Anbar Operation Command clashed with two armed groups from what is called the Islamic State of Iraq that were trying to make an incursion into the cities of Rawa and Anna killing 19 terrorists and destroying four vehicles while the rest of the terrorists fled away into the desert. The sources added that the Iraqi border guards clashed with terrorists from al Nusra Front as they were trying to infiltrate from Syria into Iraq through the desert near the border point of Al-Walid, killing four terrorists. Iraqi police also arrested a number, or excuse me, a member of Al-Qaeda in Al-Muthanna government raid. The terrorist is responsible for the car bomb blast in Samawa on the 2nd of last June that killed 16 Iraqi civilians and injured more than 30 others. With this, we come to the end of our news. More details in our, on Syria and the region on our website, www.syrianonline.sy. Stay with us, the latest in the world of economy and finance, in our economic news after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Ministry of Agriculture stressed that the school, which is going to be open soon for sheep breeders in Homs, will be the first of its kind in Syria. The first also among 30 schools, which will be open soon in the governorates, indicating that such a step is part of the government's project to support small-scale small livestock breeders and enable them to improve their production and reduce the costs as Syria is considered the fifth internationally in exporting sheep. The dollar exchange rate selling reached 240 Syrian pounds and 237.5 Syrian pounds when buying in the local markets yesterday. As the selling is done using the ID card in order to make sure that no one has bought more than $10,000 during the year. Analysts said that such a procedure taken by the Central Bank of Syria is great, but still needs regulations over the prices of selling the dollar. Also, the exchanging companies should sell the currency to citizens using six-month frozen bank accounts, pointing out that pumping the U.S. dollar by the central bank came on the right time with the holy Ramadan and the people's needs for the local currency, noting that the central bank has taken a decision for changing all the transferred money orders to Syria into the Syrian pound, while changing the exported ones according to the country's currency being exported to. A source in the Syrian telecommunication company asserted that the company plans to amend the telecommunication tariffs. The source said that the company will raise the prices of the local phone calls to 0 0.75 Syrian pounds, the national phone calls to 2.5 Syrian pounds, in addition to raising the monthly subscription to 100 Syrian pounds. On the other hand, the company will grant the subscribers 100 free calls every month. The American crude oil traded near a three-day high. On speculations that the U.S. crude inventories declined for a third week, signaling increased demand in the world's biggest oil consumer. Futures were little changed after raising 0.4% yesterday. Stockpiles probably dropped by 1.88 million barrels to the lowest level in five months.
U.S. stocks rose, giving the Standard & Poor's 500 index its longest winning streak since January. European stocks were little changed after the benchmark index rallied to an almost six-week high yesterday. Japanese shares, on the other hand, rose with the Topix index closing at its highest level in nearly two months. Gold declined for a third day on concerns that gains last week may prevent physical purchases. While investors wait the U.S. Federal Reserve's next move on monetary stimulus, spot gold lost 0.6% to reach $1,277 an ounce. The U.S. dollar weakened amid speculations that the Federal Reserve chairman may seek to damp investors' speculations, sorry, expectations of the reduction in stimulus when he speaks before the Congress tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.